Hi, I'm Shekinah and welcome to PS, Postscript, all the tools you need for purpose success. Hi, I'm Shekinah and welcome to PS. As many of you all may or may not know, I'm a high school teacher and have been for the last two years. As an educator, we're far more than just teachers of the curriculum. We are our students' life coach, counselor, mentor, support system, advocate, all of these things and more when it comes to our interaction with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Because of COVID-19, those interactions are a lot more limited now. And with those limitations, go the opportunity to be able to have those face-to-face -face interactions that could possibly change their lives. Last year, a group of students approached me with concerns about things that they weren't prepared for after high school. They presented me with a list of items that they knew about but didn't have enough knowledge about to be successful after their high school career. This series is purpose and inspired by you. My whole goal is to make sure that you understand and know these items just like I promised you would. And that's exactly what I plan to do. Through this series of conversations, I hope that you're inspired, prepared, and ignited with a fire that allows you to be the leaders that I know you can be for our future. This is for you. Thank you, Miss Lee. Uh, one of the biggest things and most important tools you need for success is confidence and identity. And today I have the lovely and amazing Genesis here to discuss with us all of the different things that will allow you to grow and empower yourself. And I don't know what I'm saying, so I'm going to start over again. Okay, awesome. <laughs> all right. One of the biggest and most important tools for success is confidence and identity. It's the first step to you stepping into your purpose, figuring out what the game plan should be, and how you can implement it to have the life that you always dreamed of. Today I have with me Miss Genesis. She's an 11th grader stepping into her best self, discovering her identity, building her confidence, and today we're gonna be discussing what that looks like and how she got there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to like No, yeah, she you went. <laughs> talent. <laughs> I do agree. Confidence is very important when it comes to coming into yourself and being who you want to be in your purpose. So I'm excited to have this conversation. Yay! <laughs> so a question I have is how to step into your purpose and be confident in it. Okay, bet. Um, one of the biggest things I think as far as like stepping into your purpose is, purpose is understanding who you are. I think a lot of times we kind of get a little um, separated and get into that like comparison mode where we're looking at the next person, trying to be somebody else and not really focusing on ourselves. Everybody is already born with like what it is that they're supposed to be doing and what their gifts and talents are. So the biggest thing I think for a lot of us is to make sure that you are spending time with yourself to get to know who you are. And when you figure out who you are, that's how you can start to really get into your identity, get into that confidence and get into your purpose. I agree. Self-care and being able to have time with myself, learn myself and understand me, what I want, what I need and what helps me learn. Yeah. It's definitely helped me into becoming who I am. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's really, really good. We were talking about, earlier we were talking about goals. Right. So right. if you could break down how we make goals or how to kind of follow through with that short term and long term, I think that would be really beneficial. Okay, awesome, awesome. Awesome. This is great. Okay, so basically, um, for the short term and the long term goals, that's what that that time that you're just you're just saying self care, right. taking care of yourself, getting to know yourself, self reflection. That is where those short term and long term goals come from. And when you're developing those goals, you kind of just take the limits off of your mind. I think a lot of times we look at things like finances, where we're from, what our family's done, hasn't done, and things like that, and it takes away from the opportunity for people to really be able to put their biggest and most creative dreams out there and their most creative ideas and experiences and really put them on paper and create them for themselves. So when it comes to us making these goals, the first thing I would say is to take the limits off of your thoughts. Then after that, whatever it is, write it down. Whatever it is, right. write it down. Whether it be you're making a vision board or you're putting it in a notebook journaling. or a journal. Awesome, right. yeah, a journal too. Like you kind of want to make sure that you're writing that stuff down. And then lastly, um, once you do it, always revisit it. Make sure it's something that you do consistently. Goals are ones that whether you can have your short-term ones, you can have your long-term ones. But at the end of the day, what accomplishes them is consistent work towards them and consistent steps towards them. And I think the biggest thing is making sure that people stay consistent. 
I def I agree with that because most people automatically put themselves into a box they have to fit in. But why have a box? Right. When you are really expressing yourself, trying to come into your purpose, you don't need restrictions or boxes or trying to fit in where you get it. Just be yourself truly and for and one hundred percent, and then you'll really be overall happy. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So I know in my experience. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay, I'm it's sorry. Okay. I always start. <laughs> so I know in my experiences, mm -hmm. when it comes coming into your purpose and expressing yourself, you aren't very comfortable because you're thinking of what will he think? What will she think? What will they think? So what do you have on a comfortable way to step into your purpose or kind of put your toe in the water right. before you're fully who you really can be? Right. I, that's awesome. Um, I think one of the biggest things is like trying things. I think we're scared. We get really afraid of like trying to be a part of a club or um, trying to start our own business or even getting into conversations with people that we don't know. That can all be like really, really scary. So I think sometimes if we allow ourselves the opportunity to just, you know, get with someone, talk to somebody that you never met before, get involved in clubs that we've never been in before, all those things will really, really help with that process. Um, and I also think too, if you kind of, um, if you give yourself the opportunity to spend time trying these things and give yourself a chance, it can take everything else to the next level. It's all about like building that confidence. Like, okay, well, I tried out for this team and I, that worked out pretty well. So maybe I should try out for this too. Or I was, I spoke to this person, that conversation went really good. I learned a lot. Maybe I should try this more so often. Baby steps. Right, baby steps. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then before you know it, you're learning new information, learning new people, learning new things about yourself and being able to grow into your best self. Okay, so when, because I think writing it down is the best way to go. When you see it, it becomes real. Then yeah. you can start taking yeah. on your steps. Yeah. So when you're starting a goal, do you think it becomes more mental or is it more physical? Like you have to start mentally preparing yourself for the goal or you can just go out and this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to do. I think at the end of the day, it's all about um, your, your, your words trigger your thoughts, your thoughts trigger your emotions, right. and your emotions trigger actions. And so it's all about what you're saying too, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if you can be, you can be like one of those type of people who, you know, want to do this, want to do that or whatever. But if you're putting negativity and right. attached to that, it kind of won't, won't come to fruition. But if instead, um, whatever you wrote down is attached with positivity. Right? Yeah, and, and, and those, those that positivity is gonna consequently like bring you to a place of doing actions towards it. Like trying to do this, trying to work um, towards that goal, trying to, build if like let's say the goal is you want to write a book or something like that before you graduate okay so boom you said that and you're actively putting forth step, well, steps towards it because you keep saying it because you're saying that's what you you know want to do right so when we were talking about the confidence that yeah. also comes with you know when you put out something you're going to get positive and negative things right so how do you deal with you have a certain confidence about yourself where you don't need the validation yeah. or the always pat on the back or the, you're doing a great job yeah, to be yeah. able to, I can still do this without that. Constantly. Yeah. I think, I think that comes with time. Right. I think it comes with time and it comes with that whole like trying things first aspect. You know, like I think sometimes what happens is we get into places where we don't allow ourselves the space to try something. Right. And so then once you kind of start trying it, that confidence is gonna start to build. Once that confidence card starts to build with one thing, it just goes on to the next one and the next one and the next one, it just keeps going. Like I know for myself definitely, and um, especially when I was like in high school trying things, like with dancing, dancing was something I've always been passionate about and things like that. And then I moved to another state and was scared to try to dance with anybody's dance team or anything like that. But like I first started dancing again at church and it kind of just took off from there. Right. But it's cause I tried it first. And that confidence in me trying something made it to where it didn't matter what anybody else had to say about it. I knew that it was, I had confidence after I tried and faith in myself mm -hmm. after I tried it. So just continuing that and building my comp, building my own self-confidence, telling myself those things through affirmations, through um, through making sure I'm listening to positive things right. that are encouraging me to continue to pursue that. And then it's like, before, after that, I have so much growth in myself. I don't even care what anybody else, you know, has to say. Period. Yeah, so, <laughs> right, <he's not. laughs> When it comes to, you said you started in church. What about people who don't have that that outlet. Yeah. You don't have a church. I don't have a supportive mom or yeah. a supportive dad or whatever yeah. the case may be. What would you what would you suggest to be for me to really feel like I wanna be in my purpose or I have an idea and I wanna get this done. But yeah. I don't feel like anybody's in my corner. Yeah. So yeah. Well I think one of the biggest things is you take that first step. 
of faith. You see what I'm saying? Or take that first step of faith in yourself in general. Mm -hmm. And what happens is as soon as you take that first step, everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm. And that's everything from who you didn't expect, the conversations right. you never had before, people just popping up out of nowhere because yeah. you put enough energy out there towards it. You gotta, got, you Law have to have, right, right, exactly. Law of attraction, you have to have enough faith in what is in you, you know? And then that energy, that drive, that faith in what's in you, people see it, whether you realize it or not, it's somebody that's always watching. And so then from them seeing that energy, from them seeing that drive, it kind of just encourages them to want to support it. I know when I first established Purpose Joy, it legit was a party that I had at my house for a uh, Valentine's Day thing or whatever the case. And um, it kept growing and building, right. but it was because people that I didn't even expect, you know, people that I knew or kind of cool with or whatever the case, just kind of like, hey, I, I like, I appreciate what you're doing. Like, how can I help? Right. And it just kept growing from there and still growing to this day that same way. So I kind of feel like with anything, um, you got to have enough faith in what right. it is inside you that you want to do. And then once you have that faith and that fire gets bright enough, people are going to see it and not just see it, but want to support it. Yeah. I think when you're in your purpose and on your trail and on your path, it's needed. Yeah. Whatever your purpose is, it's needed by someone. It's understood by someone. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, right. but somebody really is going to like it. And Absolutely. it's necessary for somebody out there. Yeah. So I, I definitely agree with that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so I have a couple questions for you, dear of sweet Genesis. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, hold a couple of things. Okay. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm here. As you're you're going into your eleventh grade year and things like that and you're developing yourself, um, what can people do that are like at, who want to be advocates, who want to help, right. who want to encourage and things like that, like people that are maybe a little bit older than you or whatever mm -hmm. the case, what do you feel like is the thing you need most? Okay, so actually I love that question because many people don't ask yeah. what you need. They automatically assume like, I don't know, maybe you need more time studying, you need more time this, when it's like, what I need is I need a comfortable space. I need things to be normalized. Yeah. I want it to be normal for me to come home and be like, I didn't have a good day. Yeah. I don't have to put on a strong face and I'd be like, how was school? Oh, it was fine. Mm -hmm. That's normal. That's not what I need. I need it to be... I need it to be safe space where I can be like, it wasn't okay. Yeah. Or I need the school system and school in general. It shouldn't be normal to go to school, come home and cry. Yeah. Just the system in itself isn't set up for us. It's set up for the teachers or adults or different things like that. So I think what students in general, not only 11th graders, but students in general, what we need is we need, like you said, advocates, people who just sit down and talk to just the question enough just to make me feel I'm hurt. Yeah. I don't have to say anything, but for somebody to ask and genuinely care mm -hmm. and be like, hey, if you ever want to talk, I'm here. Yeah. Not just a counselor, but somebody who you know is in my corner. That's definitely necessary and needed. Awesome. Awesome. That was very, I'm going to definitely write that down, put it in my, <laughs> the recesses of my brain. Right. Um, Because the goal, like I said, um, I feel like uh, a lot of times we can bypass asking you know right. what the question is they're asking what what you need for support or whatever mm -hmm. the case i feel like that's really important and when we're having the conversation about confidence and identity this mm -hmm. is like what the grand scheme of it is i think that um it's so important to know that as you're discovering your comp your confidence as you're discovering your identity you have support that's helpful right. and not just like a blanket level of support so that's why i asked the question that's, i really needed to know that so thank you of course. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so of much course. for sharing. Tell the people who you are. Tell the people where to follow. Tell the people all that. Tell the people, tell the people. Okay. I am Genesis. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Jenny dot underscore. And that's about everything for me. Bet. Perfect. Um, so this was our first ever PS episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I Thank hope you it was for having me. Of course. <laughs> I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so post PS, post script, um, perfect success. Stay tuned.